Well, it's like there's a user in a system setting. And so I, I'm not real clear. I'll probably need to watch some videos. Hey, if you got this part of the video, you've got the live unedited edition. Home Gadget Geeks Thursday night. I don't even know. I don't even know what day it is, Mike. The 4th uh, of February. There we go. February 4th. Like all my calendars have moved. <laughs> right there's there's uh, everything is <laughs> like i don't know where anything is um if you're watching live love to have you uh, join in the chat room i am in the chat room so that's great want to welcome jim uh brian ken and joe who i see out there if i didn't mention you check in in the chat room uh and um jim's a little frazzled so let's start with a let's start with a beer let's get this thing poured mike i've gone to the uh, lucky bucket Back to the Lucky Bucket snowshoe? No. Is that what the uh, snow? Yeah, no, snow suit. Ooh, I don't think I've had that one. That is, is it good? Man. Yeah, I think of the Shiner, the Christmas the cheer. holiday cheer. Holiday mm -hmm. cheer. My favorite. Yeah, kind of that. It's got kind of that spicy. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Got a good amber. Yeah, that, that, looks, good. that looks delicious. It does look good. So, whoa. Did you hear that? Nope. My, my sounds. Okay, good. So we're on the Mac tonight. Just as you're, if you're listening in the, uh, if you're listening in the chat, you're here early. Uh, the, well, we'll talk about it in the show, but we're on the Mac. So <laughs> like it's <laughs> the date, by the way, is top, right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like so that'll be your new spot to look. It is. Um, it is incredible here for, for those of you we've got here. We'll just show this. You get, get a little inside look uh, of kind of how it's set up. So, you know, we've got a two, the, the minis got two, you can kind of see the mini in the background over here. And then uh, these two monitors are, are the Mac. And then these two here are windows. And um, I've got, I think I've got the mouse working across them so you can, you know, using synergy. We'll talk again. We'll talk about it in the show, but um, it has been a um, chore, Mike. No, yeah, actually, actually, not as hard as I thought. Again, no. we'll save it. We'll save it for the show. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Save no, it for the show. Not as hard as I thought. So, um, yeah, Jim says Omaha is going to be in the deep freeze next week. It and is. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that during the show too. It's going to be a little chilly. I am not happy with my fence installation, people. Oh, I'll say that. that's not going well. Well, they, they tore down the fence way before all the snow came. They got the posts in, and then they didn't get all the rest of it up, and then it started snowing, and they're not going to be able to come oh. back to all this melts. And my yeah. dog is a dog door. I'm like, I would have rather had the old fence up this whole time because I've had to have – like, my dog doesn't know what to do. I have to go put him on a chain, and he just, like, he is not about that life. So they, uh, I think they feel bad because they keep calling, like, hey, we didn't forget about you. I'm like, I know, but it's been two weeks, and it's going to be probably another two weeks before the snow melts, so you're putting me out a month. My dog's gonna be all not out of training. It's it's a mess. You know, we're you're fuzzy again this week, like you were last week. Am I for me? Yeah, a little little band. I, I wonder what's going on. Any, did you change anything or? Uh, one sec, cloud. I might be cloud bearing might be running. Oh, it is. Okay, one second. Your your furnace running down there too. Right now it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I can hear it a little bit in the. <laughs> okay, tell me I, if I, I tell me if I clear up. I stopped the uh, Cloudberry was going on my Unraid box. Oh, a little bit better. Anything. We'll see. A little see. bit better. A little bit better. Okay. We got a lot to talk about. For not having a lot to talk about, we actually have a lot to talk about. So uh, this is this is going to be fun with, the, with it coming earlier than I thought. Got to actually get to use it for the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, I tell you, it came. I've literally had it up and running 24 hours. <laughs> So, like, if you think about first impressions, you're going to get them tonight. So, all right, let me kick, let me kick this thing off. Let me get this thing going. Here we go. This is the Average Guy Network. Oh, let me try that one more time. <laughs> Not sure where I was going there with that one. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number four seventy eight, recorded on February fourth, twenty twenty one. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. So some find your way into your home in a big way. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the average guy.tv studios here. Mike, weird storm came through last night. It was like 45 yesterday, and then rain, ice, snow all overnight. Like I went to bed and, and it was great. Woke up and it was 
covered. And now we're in the frozen tundra for the next, like, I think week and a half to two weeks. I think it's, we, I, I, we're barely going to get above maybe 14, 15 degrees for the next uh, two weeks. I know. I wish I, I, I wish I would have gotten out if that's the wrong message. Jim says, yeah, Omaha is going to be in a deep freeze. We are. Uh, uh, next week we do have, uh, we do have some really cold, but that's good. Cause that, that means a lot of inside computer work. <laughs> and, uh, we'll talk about that here on the show tonight, but of course, uh, we'll post a show, well, a few show notes here, uh, this week out at the average guy TV. Uh, don't forget big thanks to our Patreon subscribers. Uh, you guys who we throw up there, Brian, Tim, I don't know why he says V Tim, but Tim, Ed, Aaron, Joe, Jim, Ross, Andy, John, Ed, Ryan, uh, Justin, John, uh, Brian, Dwayne, Nathaniel. That's a pretty good list. And Paul, thanks guys for being Patreon subscribers. Always a big help, uh, to us here and, and appreciate that as well. And then, um, a mic, of course, uh, you know, the trading stuff, we talked about that a little bit last week and it continues to have, it continues to be interesting. Let's just say it that way. If you're, by the way, now is a good time. I think now is a good time. If you haven't evaluated crypto and you want to do that, you don't have to put your own money in, so to speak. Uh, check out the average guy.tv slash Coinbase, uh, set up an account. You get 10, I get 10. And then there's like, like 40 or 50 bucks worth of training in there. All you got to do is watch these videos and answer some questions. It's actually <laughs> Like if you don't know anything about crypto, it's actually kind of interesting, right? You get four or five, six different coins you can kind of mess around with. You get anywhere from three to ten dollars per coin. Just a great way to get started. The average guy.tv slash coinbase. And we'll start you with 10. I mean, if you if you don't understand it, don't invest in it. But in this case, it's not your money. <laughs> so give it a try. We'd love to have you um do that uh, as well. And and so um uh, I think good times ahead. Um, well, I don't know. I'm not a financial planner or expert or even a lawyer. Uh, Mike plays one at work, but not in this case. So yeah. we just, just, uh, just be careful out there. Um, uh, kind of an update. Uh, I was on a recording with Dave McCabe last night. We recorded reset. He's been, uh, he's been super busy. I kind of quiz him on where he's been. And so if you were a reset listener and you like, Man, I haven't heard. I think the last one he did was Schoonover is where they were talking about SMRs versus mm, yeah. Uh, what's the other one? I just say non-SMR. I don't non know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Non-SMRs. There you go. Um, there is a term for it, but I can't. I can't remember. They'll throw it in the chat room here in a second. Um, that's the last one. Schoonover was on is in May. So we catch up with Dave a little bit. Uh, talk about some well, kind of what he's gotten into. Mike, like you, he catches these. You know bugs yes and he's, he and he's then he just goes all the way in on these things and so i don't want to spoil it so you'll have to listen head out to reset if you unsubscribe from it head out to reset fm and resubscribe or you can find reset in any of the uh in any of the podcasting apps do you want to say something, Mike? Sorry, you no, up. well, I was going to mention, actually, just just super quick. One thing I was thinking about this week, and when you brought up Coinbase number one, then we were talking about you know trading and things like that. Uh, throwing it out there, we're going to talk about Mac here in a second. If you guys are, you know, we've all been working from home for the past however long, a few of us, most of us, some of us have been working from home. And if any of you have gotten into you know trading on the markets, uh, I found out that there's some, a lot of people out there that don't know that through your brokerage, whether it be TD Ameritrade or Schwab, they have trading platforms that are free to use. And meaning when I say that, I mean like an app to use for trading, which is great other than using their website. Um, if you're, you know, buying and selling securities. So something to think about if you are, if you have been dabbling in that TD Ameritrade has a great one, think or swim. Um, it's, it's the one I use. Uh, but I was talking to a buddy and he, you know, he does this just for fun. And he's like, gosh, this website's so clunky. I'm like, why are you using the website? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, a free trading platform on all these brokerages and he had he had no idea so you know if, if you're out there and that's what you're doing there's an app and it works great on mac um i actually run thinkorswim on my mac uh prime time so there was just something that came up and i was like you know what if someone's in the community and didn't know that might be a little helpful tip right there yeah yeah it's a listen these are interesting times whenever these kinds of things happen amc GameStop. oh geez yeah right? yes <laughs> Everybody kind of like all of a sudden my, you know, my, my 24 year old son is talking about stocks, right? <laughs> like he, he didn't know, he didn't, well, he didn't know anything <laughs> about that. Just, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but, but I think, the, and that's not totally true, but I think these are great opportunities by the way, for us. Well, okay. We all come at this a little bit differently. Mike, I have grown adult kids. You're, you have young kids. Mm-hmm. 
But I think these are just great opportunities. Like this is, by the way, not the time to do things. If you haven't been in it and you're not doing it, this is probably not the time to just all of a sudden start. But to start paying attention, it's a great time to start paying attention. Read, learn, listen, figure some things out. These things are super messy when they happen. You probably already missed it, just to be honest. So, but they're great opportunities to jump in and kind of understand it. You know, we talked about that crypto before. Uh, yeah, crypto prices, especially Ethereum, uh, is, is at an all-time high. Um, this is a great time to start paying attention. Don't do anything. But start paying attention. Like, this is a great opportunity. Mike, I just remember a year ago when we were at the bottom. And, every you know, that's the hardest time to get in because you're like, am I throwing am I just throwing money into the trash can and lighting it on fire? And you feel like it, you are. And then you look, you know, you come, come back to it today and you're like, wow, that was a really good decision. Right. And, yeah. right. Well, so, you know, they always say the best time to get in the market was yesterday, right? Yeah, like yeah. You, that waiting, that waiting, oh, I shouldn't jump in now. I shouldn't jump in now. Just, just, yeah. just get in, right? Because you're, this is a long-term play. Uh, well, well, I'm talking about the stock market, right? Like when you're typically, when you're investing for all that kind of stuff. But it, what I like about it, Jim, is, Nowadays, with the amount of courses online, right. like, um, you know, I dove deeper into trading options not too long ago. It was something, you know, like in, in business school, you learn about options in your finance classes, but really diving into strategies of how to trade, you know, options effectively. And I learned that all through courses online, right? Like in, in, in a very succinct, quick manner, uh, I love the access to that type of information. You know, it's no longer, you don't need to go get a finance degree to understand how to, you know, trade securities online, buy and sell mm -hmm. options, right? Uh, and it's so easy now with the apps you have, you know, especially if you don't, I have to pre-clear all my trades since I work for a brokerage firm. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have to do that, I mean, you can get a Robinhood app and you can be trading options and in a few days. So mm -hmm. it, it's cool. I love the access to information and knowledge out there that kind of lets the average guy get in and, and compete. Well, and that's the, that's it. I mean, I remember trading in 2000, you know, 99, 2000, 2001 in the first dot com bubble, right? That we had really. And that was the first kind of the very first introduction to online trading. Like you could before that, it wasn't even possible. Like right. we think of it today, it's like a foregone conclusion. Look at 99, 2000. It was, you, 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 we, TD Ameritrade, who, who uh, based here in the Omaha. Um, area, or at least was, I think mm -hmm. now they're Schwab. I think they're merging with yeah. Schwab. Heading out of Dallas. Out of, yeah, out of Texas. Um, I remember trading stocks online and thinking, this is great. And maybe it was $7 a trade. Now that's yeah. gone to the bottom, right? It's now it's commission-free. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and, and, and it uh, that's actually kind of led to some of the shenanigans that are going on right now. But okay, that aside. So um, uh, certainly that has allowed the average guy, I think, to be involved in some of those things. I 100%. love the advice that you just gave. There's so much online learning available. So yeah. if you haven't, if you've been afraid of it or you just, it, it's just something that's just kind of mystified you, go, go out. There's lots of free training. There's lots of, you know, be, be cautious on YouTube. please. I was yeah. just going to say that, you know, the other thing is with how easy it is to set up a Robinhood account, to set up a TD account, um, I see a lot of people not putting the time in to learn ahead of time right, and right. losing their shorts, making trades right. that cost them, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not, you know, and maybe not to that drastic extreme, but uh, you get educated first. What I'm saying is if you do it in the right way, all that information is there. Yeah. I feel, I mean, there are so many. I would want to tell that to like every college kid. I see so many kids who are legally able to do some of this stuff, but they know nothing about it. And they're just, you know, pumping money away. Some of them are doing great because they're learning how to do it. Uh, but, you know, you definitely have to put in the research and know how these things work before you uh, start doing anything on your own. Well, the the 2001 burst has taught me a lot of things. And, and in those days, uh, I remember buying Red Hat at, at you know, 60 and it going all the way to 400 and then it going all the way back to five or, or whatever it did. I can't remember. And I wrote it the whole way up and down <laughs> and I made a whole bunch when I say a whole bunch of money, you know, this, I think at the peak, it was maybe $2,000, right? Just to be honest, like I was young. I had no money. I was trading money. like 50 bucks, right? Yeah. Started, yeah. You know, 50, a hundred bucks, something like that. You're trying to, Hey, cause you hear these stories of people turning a hundred dollars into a hundred thousand dollars, you know, and you're like, Oh, this is me. And your day, we were day trading back in those days and giving each other advice at work, you know, that kind of stuff. 
And um, yeah, I wrote it up Anna, and then I wrote it down. And I remember like <laughs> closing that TD Ameritrade account out with like seven dollars in it, you know. And you're like, man. So, but but to be honest, it was a great learning opportunity for me. And it wasn't I'm not going to say it wasn't real money because it was real money, but it wasn't a lot of money on that in that you know. So um, it, it's stuff I could recover from, and and I didn't borrow, I didn't leverage i didn't margin any of those things right yeah um so anyways we say all that to say it's just a hot topic right now so be careful out there but there's a lot of great technology around that and you know for me that coinbase app still continues to just be a great way for me to keep up what's going what's going on in the crypto market so don't forget the average guy dot, i didn't know, the average guy tv slash coinbase if you want to jump out there okay uh mike let's talk some tech before we talk about the mac and yes the mac is here and, uh, and yes, Dave grilled me on the Mac when I was recording his show, which will probably be out next week uh, as you're listening to this. So by the time you're listening to this, uh, check out reset.fm and, and see if the most recent, by the way, uh, Joe said CMR. So CMR, SMR, oh, CMR um, for those two, those two uh, different kinds of hard drives. So a couple things uh, before we dive into the Mac. Um, one is a couple updates for you, a couple hardware updates for you. So I told you last week I ordered the RAM. And it came in today uh, uh, via uh, via eBay, sixty bucks for sixteen gig, which not terrible. It's not great. I mean, it's old. Not RAM. great for the speed, right? That's the thing is almost it's almost like old RAM is more expensive because it's harder to get, right? They're not, they can right. do six of that. Uh, I'm in the same boat. Whereas like sixty gigs would get you, well, maybe the same, but a lot faster RAM. Now you can get <laughs> new RAM DDR4 for uh, that same price. Yeah, I, you know, you need to match it. So this is DDR3, uh, yeah. 1866. And um, I even tracked down the exact brand. Like, this is exactly what I have in there. I wanted it to match. Checked out the pictures and made sure everything was, you know, everything was exactly the same. So 16, 60 bucks. Um, I'm kind of excited about it because that's going to go in the Unraid box. So that'll go from 16 gig of RAM now to 32, which is super cool. So that'll be full. Um, and is and, that the old media? Did you decide yeah, what to use no. that? Is that your old machine that you were using to podcast? That's I now was. the gun raid? Yeah. So Core i7-4770 uh, chip. It's got a really nice um, gigabyte Z87 uh, board that's in there. That's got six uh, six SATA ports. And I'm uh, Kevin, back in the day, Kevin Schoonover sent me, I think, uh, uh, you know, a SATA expansion board. It's not mm-hmm. what we, it's not what we call them, but you know like what I mean? SLA card or something like that. Yeah. yeah right. Yes. Something like yeah. that. Right. And I think it's got eight. I think it has eight. So 14, I'll have up to 14 slots um, available there. That'll come in handy. Cause, cause Joe sent me his super micro. So he had a couple of these. Oh, nice. Look at that. Uh, yeah. He had a Excuse couple me. of these. Five bay? Uh, it is a super micro and D- Dave busted me when I was, when he was interviewing me, he was like, Hey, I want to give you one thing of advice. You guys are so video heavy that you don't, uh, for the audio, you don't really explain sometimes what you're showing. And I was like, yeah, I know that's, yeah. that's, that's our bad. We'll get better at that. So this is a super micro, super micro mobile rack CSE M three five TQB. So there you go. Dave McCabe, suck it. So um, I was showing it on screen right now. Five, five bay fan in the back two uh, down. Make sure I got the orientation right. Two, two uh, power supply, you know, for your power Molex, supply. Above, yeah. And then five, yeah, Molex, thanks. Five SATA down the side. So I have 10. And then uh, I also will be able to have a three there for 13. And I can put two for 15. So I think, I think I'm good on that. That on, was a lot of numbers. Here. Yeah. So yeah. how many drives total? Well, let's see. I said eight and six. So that's 14. Mm-hmm. And then I have 10 on the super micro and then I have a, another bay that will give me, that's got three in there. So 10, 13. And then of course the 14th will be the SSD. Got we'll it. Just, okay. We'll put somewhere. So that will fill that box. So let's go, it's going in a, an old cooler master case that's tall, but it's got those, it, it has those, you know, it's got a uh, two, five and a half inch, bays that are open and then it actually i think has three and i got one of those full um so yeah so we'll move the board over 
and stall. I'm like this. I just I don't know what it is about this, Mike. As I look so at this, does this go in the box or on the outside? Yeah, no, it goes in the box. It goes in the box. Okay. Yeah, and it's a big tall box. If you look at those cooler masters, you see they were really popular. They got a big gigantic fan on the top that was kind of meant to exhaust, you know, all that hot air coming from GPUs. Right. So um, at some point, probably not this weekend, because I'm going to be working on the Mac. <laughs> but uh, we'll start putting those together. So, Joe, thanks for sending this. This is super cool. I've always wanted one of these. He's like, yeah, I got a couple sitting here. And I was like, we'll send them on. Let's <laughs> let's let's uh, take a look at that. So um, that'll all be mounted. And, Mike, I think I'll also then take and begin to consolidate. And, you know, the question is, we mentioned this last week. I got an AMD box that I think is going to become a PFSense router. Again, it lived its life that at one point in time. Um, and then I think the, and this is where I'm debating. I've got a small box that's really working well as an Unraid box. And, I, and it's got the home assistant on it. Uh, Dave grilled me on the home assistant, by the way, on that podcast. So if you want to go over and hear me talk about Dave, when he heard us talk about dashboards. Oh, by the way, we were supposed to have Joe from the ultimate dashboard on tonight. He couldn't make it tonight. So I mentioned that last week. If you're wondering, Hey, you going to talk about that? Uh, we had a conflict, so we'll see if we can get him back on. Um, but he, I, I think I may run two unraid boxes. Do you see any problems with me having, no. kind of having a power one that's kind of VM driven and those kinds of things. And then kind of keep that one for not at all. I've thought about doing the same thing, especially, yeah. you know, especially if you have different size boxes, but you know, moving around where the CPU horsepower is. No, not at all. Yeah. Okay. You have the low power that could be almost just like network storage, right? It's like a, it's yeah. like a low powered NAS and your other one's more of acting like more of that home server type build, yeah. right? Where it's going to do a lot more of the tasks. It's extra power. It's kind of running the one terabyte drives that I got in the house. I, I'm having a, have, I'll be honest. I'm, you know, I have a hard time letting things go. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes, I do. <laughs> so I'm just like, uh, eventually I want it. I should tear it down, put everything on one box and just be done with it. That's a lot easier. However, it could make a backup for me as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll kind of work with it and see what happens uh, as we move forward. But those are, those are some of the updates uh, as the as the Mac came in. Then a bunch of things uh, kind of shift around here. Well, Mike, let's um let's take a look at it. How about how about yeah. so I, I got a setup yours. got a new view for you here. I, I installed the camera here. We'll go full screen on that. So um, you're kind of looking from the back of the studio now across uh, at it. We uh, a Mac Mini came on Wednesday night. You can actually kind of see it in the background right there. It's kind of hiding behind it. Mike, I found it really helpful just to put it. I have a little table back there and I just set it on the table and then brought all the kind of brought all the cables up, including the monitor cables I had purchased. And I think I sh maybe showed that on the show last time, but I purchased a Thunderbolt to DVI adapter. Yeah. These are, these are Dell. These are older uh, monitors. Um, I think they're IPS monitors. 1080, they're 1080p. Um, they're 24 inches. And they're just great monitors. I, I wanted to use them again, right? I didn't want to have to buy new ones. So right. DVI to Thunderbolt worked great. Uh, the other one was DVI to HDMI, which plugs in the second port, and boom, we're off and running. So you can kind of see here if, uh, you know, we're sneaking the, you can you can kind of see the matte color in the background, right? Yeah, and I like how you I like how you brought the cords towards you, so it's easier for you to plug and unplug USB devices, and you're not having to get up and reach around. You have access to those ports, so flipping it around so the backs towards the facing you makes a lot right. of sense. Yeah, I'm not running cords back behind, and I think eventually I'll get rid of this table, and I might mount the Mac underneath the desk yeah. just so it's there, kind of nice and clean. Uh, that Windows PC that had been the studio PC, which is still there, is now this rack kind of right here. So is it on the video, it's to my left. It's two stacked monitors. I actually have a really old Dell, almost like I think it's a three by two. <laughs> so it doesn't have very high resolution, but I kind of use it for things that I want to be able to see really well. Twitter, sometimes Discord, some of those kinds of things. So the Windows boxes are still here, and I've got another set of Windows boxes that are to my right and stacked as well. So these two, these two stacked to the left, I've got two more stacked to the right, a 27 inch and a 22 inch above it. And then, then there's the work computers uh, way over to the right. So I got kind of a lot of stuff going down, but Mike, uh, the setup here works 
that part works great. Like I had no, I had no issues with the two monitor setup. Yeah. The hardware setup looks, looks great. Yeah. looks very functional. I, I thought I had an addiction to screen real estate. <laughs> and then I look at your setup and there's just four in that screen. And then I know that to your right, like you said, you got what, how many more to your right, Jim? Two, two more monitors. Well, two stacked. Yeah. To my right, I have two stacked that and are, one extra. The, and then to, for work, I have the, uh, the ultra wide. So I've wow. got the 34 inch ultra wide and I've got a 24 inch touchscreen that sits above that. That's got the dashboards for, you know, it's got the home assistant dashboards on it. Yeah. So I could literally be working. It's got the ring cam. We showed those last week. So it's got the ring cams on them. It's got the dashboards with the big buttons. And if I want to, as I'm working from to the right here, I can just the big buttons, I can just push that, turn off the lights, look at the ring cam, some of those kinds of things. Yeah. I don't, I, I I'm going to install a toilet, right? I was going to say, do you ever have to leave? Uh, no. No, I don't. In fact, my watch reminds me. Time um, to stand up. Yeah, shut yeah up. watches me all the time. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the the setup experience. Yeah. By the way, the unboxing, super boring. Like open the box. You can see the box up here. Open the box. It's right there. <laughs> little tab, pull it out. Underneath it is the cord. That's all there is to it. They got there. so minimal with the packaging, even the iPhone packaging, right? The big thing was once they eliminated the, the power charger, there's like nothing to it. Yeah, it's almost disappointing in some ways. You know, yeah. you're kind of like, oh, so. Um, How much money did I spend on this tiny little package? Exa exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I began to kind of move some things around, get some things set up. I, I started with just a single monitor, kept the Windows box right next to it because I wanted to begin to set some things up. And, you know, I'd done a little bit of advanced work just to kind of think, okay, I got to start getting kind of in the Mac mindset. It's, it's... <laughs> It's not all that different than Windows, just to be honest. Like closeouts in the opposite corner. It's like I almost did this on purpose. Clock is in the upper right instead of the bottom right. Um, there, the even the permissions. Whenever you go to install something, it asks for your password every time. I think because I set up the I set up maybe encryption or something. I can't. I, I don't know why, but it, it, that's pretty much always unless it's okay. from the App Store. Yeah. It's it's going to yeah. ask you for that. Yeah, yeah, that's okay because that's Windows now. now Windows just warns me, like, hey, do you really want to do this? Doesn't right. make you put your password in. I had, I set a password that I know really well. So it was pretty well, With your Apple password. Watch, it shouldn't. You should just be, since you're wearing your Apple Watch, it should unlock that computer. Anytime you need oh. a password, it should just be putting it in there for you. Oh, okay. That's another setting we'll have to get into to set yes. up. Yes. Yeah. So there's over the next couple weeks, I'm going to need to go kind of go into to begin to optimize it. And, and make because yeah that would be that would be awesome yeah because when you sit down and you hit the space bar that thing should just unlock for you because you have your apple watch on and it knows it's you so you should never have to type in your password except for on a reboot and maybe some other times um yeah okay so that's good so i've got i got some work to do there uh began to jump in and think about browsers because the, the the you know there's there's really two things let me, let me remove this thing because it's going to just distract me there's really two things that I'm going to use this box for. One is streaming, what we're doing right now. So I needed to make sure the camera was working. I needed to make sure that the sound was working. So I called my buddy Ed Sullivan, and uh, Ed's a sound engineer guy. So we jumped on and began to kind of work on camera. Mike, how do we do this? He immediately said, well, there's two, two programs that you need to get if we're going to do podcasting on this thing. One is Audio Hijack. Mm -hmm. And that comes with, That's that comes with, but you can package it with loopback. My pretty, yeah, yeah, loopback. So the two together, about 130 bucks. It's expensive when it comes to software, but on bottom yeah. act, I expect everything to be expensive. <laughs> I'd always wanted audio hijack, but I could never fork out the money for it. I never yeah. used it. Well, it's one of those things recently I've needed to play stuff back out to what we're doing here in StreamYard, right? Yep. And I've always, to, uh, me too. I've always tried to hack it together with like, Physical okay, connections. yeah, can Maybe I make it, this yeah. work or cheap it out, whatever. And Ed was like, look, this just works. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Right. So audio hijack loop back or two, we put on right away. Loop back had some crazy, like, okay, this first impression of installing things on the Mac. There's not like, I expected that to be a, just a drop dead, easy. Everything is the same. Like I thought they had this thing down. It there's like three or four different ways to, to me. And maybe to, yeah. is that right? To, I mean, to there's, install? 
especially well, I think of like two like app store versus non app store, right? Like your traditional. Yeah, with some are in a package, like some are a package, some are a DNG, some are like they have all these different kinds of ways. Now, it's not once you figure it out, it's not hard. Drop it in the application folder, run it. Um, some of them give you some instructions, like, hey, now drag this over here. You know, right? (laughs) Right? Yep, and it's usually a little shortcut to your applications folder, anyways. Mm -hmm. You're just dragging it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a little surprised that Apple didn't have its install act together i thought it would i ex- listen i expect that on the windows side yes yeah. although windows is pretty simple now you're either in the store or it's an exe installer for the most right. part right right so that was kind of a little bit of a shock for me kind of like oh well anyway so ed walked me through got all the audio set up got the got the video working we did some stuff i was tuning the video right up until <laughs> uh, literally a minute before the show, Mike was giving me a hand um, on getting it done. But but I, th- I think what I want to spend some time and I want to quiz you a little bit on is all of a sudden, because I'm going to work in the browser on Mac OS, I started thinking, you know, I'm now working in two different OSs. So I have Windows and Mac. Right. Well, I have also have Android and iPhone because I'm working off browsers off my iPhone. I'm also... Uh, through the, you know, through my, through my fire tablet. Mm -hmm. I just had a nice, there we go. Through the fire tablet, I'm using Android. Okay. So I have four browsers. Um, Oh, I also have three authentication environments now. So I have to authenticate to here to my, to the studio PC, what used to be is a windows live account that I'm authenticating to, right. To make that work. Um, now Mac, I've got its own authentication. I'm logging in with a password, whether it's going through the watch or not, I'm still yeah. logging in. Right. Right. And then, it, then I have work authentication. Right. So I've got those three different and they, they, they all have different kind of ways of doing things. Right. Right. And then I was thinking I have eight different browsers now because I've got Chrome and Mac or Chrome and edge and, and, um, Oh, what's the other one? Um, why is it escaping me all of a sudden? Safari? No, well, yeah, Safari, actually, so four. And then the secure one, Brave. Oh, yeah. I use all four of those now for various, in various, okay. But then I also use some of those on the phone. And, right. Right. You yep. know, and you're thinking, okay. And so the 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 big question I had, and I, we posted this in the Discord group, the average guy.tv slash Discord, if you want to join us out there. Like, how do I sync all these things? Because to me, bro- bookmarks have become really, really important because I'm, I have to remember so many different things at work and I don't want to have to go find them again. Like I just want to be able to use them. Right. Yep. And I was thinking, okay, well I can, maybe I can sync across Chrome. Okay. I can sync, but that doesn't sync with edge and definitely doesn't sync with brave and Safari is its whole, is it's, it's total different animal. Right. Yeah. So, Mike, when you think about, I, so bookmarks are one of those, but there's gotta be a, do you think there's other things? Like there's gotta be other cross platform things that we do now, maybe browsers are the most, the easiest to think about, but are there others out there as we think about, cause you, you live in that environment as well. Are there do, things, yeah. Other things I need to worry about. Um, so, browser? well, I mean, so, so me for browsers, I just standardize on two, right? I standardize on Chrome and Safari. So Chrome is, I'm using 99% of the time because of just like you said, I'm logged into one Chrome account on all computers, work computer, then my gaming computer, my lap, my Mac laptop. So that syncs fine. And then every so often, like whenever I make some big changes to my bookmarks, I'll open Safari on the Mac and just import, clear them out and import them from Chrome. That way those bookmarks are synced to my phone. Okay. So then when I'm on my phone with Safari, I have all my standard bookmarks. Um, so it is one kind of manual step to get Safari, but there's, I'm not updating the bookmarks I use every single day. I'm not changing very often. Yeah. I might book something for a temporary purpose, but I don't need that on all my devices. Um, the only other one that I think of cross platform that can be a little bit confusing on Mac, to be honest, just because of keeping it connected is uh, mounted drives on your network. Mm. So obviously mounting those drives, uh, definitely use SMB. Obviously, um, you know, they used to have the two protocols, one for Mac and and one for Windows. But now I think everything is standardized on SMB. Uh, But the way Mac does it is just a lot different than 
yeah. than Windows. I love the way Windows maps a drive. And in Mac, it just seems more like a connection that's like temporary, but not something that's like always in your file system like a map drive is. So uh, okay. that can be a little bit, a little bit different. Okay. As Good. far as everything else goes cross-platform wise, uh, you know, it really just depends on what apps you're using, right? Like I use the Windows suite. So those apps being all synced across seems to work okay. Um, but it, it really just depends on kind of what, what other things you're using. For me, the password manager, you know, most of the time, those are just, they're available on every single browser. It doesn't really matter, right? I use yeah. Bitwarden. It works everywhere. even works on the iPhone, which is rare. Uh, so, so it works. Anything else you've run into, though, as you've tried? Well, I, I didn't on the browser. The setup process lately, which is, oh, you learn a lot of those things when you're doing the setup. Like, you oh, really do. I didn't think about, you know, that yeah. aspect of it. You're like, oh, because it just worked in your browsers right. or whatever. You know, I, the very first thing I always do is turn on LastPass. Like, the, I just go straight for the jugular for passwords because you're going to start setting all these things up again. And you're like, okay, I, I don't want to have to remember or find these passwords. So the first thing I do is st start making sure that LastPass works in all the different browsers. Right. You know, people may be wondering, like, why, why all those browsers, Jim? Why would you use them all? Well, I'm actually trying to move away from Chrome. So I'm trying to see... Can I make Edge work for me? Yeah, this is yeah. kind of a can I actually I leave? the same as Chrome, right? You right. could standardize on Edge. It's Chromium based. Here, uh, StreamYard works in it. It's actually uh, over the last couple of weeks I've been working in it, uh, and it's it's really good. I actually like the fonts better. <laughs> like the fonts are easier for me to read in Edge than they are in Chrome for whatever reason. Um, Browse, uh, I've been using uh, YouTube or I've been using Brave to kind of be a blocker on YouTube because I get so irritated with the 8,000 commercials and I want to pay YouTube 10 bucks. <laughs> like I just, it's Google, you know, like, I started doing that and I won't go back. I didn't, they gave me like, I think I'm actually still on the free. They gave me like three months free of premium. And I'm like, I will pay for this till the day I die. Cause I love YouTube with no ads. It's yeah. such an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, well, and I don't want to go back either. I've been on a three month free trial that ends in March and yeah. I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do this. So I'm kind of anticipating having to, and it's going to happen on my phone. I can't, I can use brave on the desktop to block them and it works great, but I can't use brave. I mean, I really like the YouTube app on my, on my iPhone. So I've got some, I have decisions to make at this point, you know, you're kind of like, Oh, anyways. So, um, yeah, so that's why I'm trying I'm trying to use different. I also want to stay kind of in touch with what the browsers are doing. You know, yeah. I just to kind of know since for for the for the work that we do here. What I what I came up with and and I think it was Brian that helped me out. Um I think that was Brian or Bust Out. I think we had a conversation about this in the Discord group is an application and, and I had seen this too called raindrop.io. Raindrop all one word dot .io. Hmm. And it's actually a sync Mm, that'd be a that sync isn't the right way to say it. It's more like a uh, last pass for your bookmarks. Like it does a great job. You, you, you install an extension in all your browsers. Then you, anytime you make a change in any one of the browsers, you change it in, in the extension, the, the, the raindrop extension. And then that syncs across all browsers. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's exactly what I'd be looking for too. Mike, it's super. Right. That gets you out of, because the only other thing I was going to say about Edge with syncing is, doesn't that mess you up when you start to go to your different Windows computers that are signed to different accounts? Because doesn't Edge authenticate through <laughs> the Windows account, right? Which is the only reason. Yeah, because that's why I ended up going with Chrome, yeah. because I am able to use it on my work laptop where I'm not authenticated like right. I am for my home Windows machine. And I think they're working on unifying so I could have a my own personal account and my work account in the browser. And I think they're working on sync. I, I could be wrong between those today. That doesn't work. Got I it. don't think, but, but even if it did, uh, it, it is kind of like, oh, I'd almost rather have a repository. Mike, even at one point I thought about, I wonder if I exported an XML file and put it at the average guy TV that in a place only I could see it. And then I would sync. Cause a lot of these browsers <laughs> gives you the ability to, link to an XML file, right? Yeah. And then I would, you know, and I thought, okay, there's got to be easier ways to get this done. So raindrop.io, um, it's an extension you, you install in your browser. What it caused me to do, my, my bookmarks had gotten out of control in Chrome. They were just, they were, 
it was one gigantic list of, and you could, you know, you could put them in folders and stuff like that, but it really had grown to be one gigantic list. Um, so I spent a couple hours going through cleaning up my bookmarks, uh, grouping them together in things that made sense. And then really forced myself towards the end of the week to be like, okay, if I need a bookmark, cause I've, I've left them in the browser for now, just cause I'm not that good yet, but going to up, going up into the extension, pulling it down, choosing it from there, retraining my brain, right. To kind of, um, remember where those things kind of remember where those things are at. Right. So rain, raindrop, all one word, raindrop.io. They have a free plan that'll pretty much, I think, do what everybody needs. Uh, if you're a heavy bookmark user, they do have a paid pro plan that you can go with. That's got some additional features, but, um, give that a try. I don't have an affiliate link for that. Um, but, but, um, you might want to look at it. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's ex- I'm going to definitely gonna check it out. Cause that would give me, cause I'm not the biggest fan of Chrome either, but to be honest, I don't have any of the memory problems that people have with Chrome. Like when, even when we're running this, I'm oh. only using four gigs of Ram on this entire PC, this gaming PC I'm running it on. Oh, I don't um, I, I, like, I can, I, there's sometimes where I have a million tabs open and I can, don't run into any issues. So I don't know if yeah. I'm just getting lucky, but the one tip I have on bookmarks and I'm sure everyone in this community knows about it, but if you store your bookmarks in the bookmark bar up top, if you just put them in there, but don't put a name, it just shows the icon. So you can show a bunch. So like here, I'll share my screen just, uh, Whoops, that's not what I want to do. I want to share my screen um, real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about. So up along the top here, if you delete the name out of your bookmarks, then they're all just the icons. And you can fit a ton of little icons along the top. And so that's my way of showing a ton of different ones. It does make it a little confusing if it can't connect because then you have a bunch of just like icons up there. But as soon as you connect the internet, it should reload them. Uh, but once one quick little tip for having a yeah. lot of nice bookmarks, easily accessible. If you have your icons memorized, there's a good way for me to kind of rethink my organization. And now it's in all my browsers. Um, one of the things I haven't, I don't use bookmarks on, um, uh, mobile for whatever reason that my brain doesn't work that way. I, I don't know why, but I don't. So I haven't set that up on mobile. I guess I'll give it a try, uh, there, but Going across all these computers over the last couple of days as I've been moving them around, setting them up, man, it was nice to have that um, there. W- one of the questions I threw out at Ed as we were setting things up, what do you use for a mail client? And he told me one. I was like, you know, I'm kind of a stock guy. Like mm-hmm. I still haven't changed the, 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 the wallpaper art that came with the Mac. I'm probably not gonna. Like it's just going to stay as is it, or I'm going to make a black. Like I, I'll probably just make a black, plain black background. And I thought, you know, I wonder if I can make the standard mail client that comes with the Mac OS work. Mike, what do you, what do you, have, uh, did you, when you were doing mail on, uh, on the Mac, what did you use? I used, well, I was a big web mail guy. So as far as all my Gmail accounts and everything, I put, I just used the web browser for things like my uh, W0 EGR website, that email that I actually runs through Christian, I did use the mail client, things like um, you know any custom mail that didn't have a great web experience. I did use the built-in mail client. I, I loved it. I thought it worked really, really well. And it's, it's fluid. And I think anytime, especially on Mac, if you can use a Mac, an Apple-made app, I would suggest it. Just because they do, you know, Apple's all about our software, our hardware, right? So they're running their OS on their own hardware and optimization is big. That is how they get away with having technically lower spec machines that run just as well or better than higher spec machines just because they do well at optimization. So yeah, I think that's why the mail app, Safari, a lot of those work really well uh, because they're optimized. You know, I haven't even opened Safari once (laughs) in the 24 hours I've had this. I was just thinking like, Oh, I never opened Safari yet. I just I you know, installed Edge in Chrome right away because I knew I'd use them. So I haven't put Brave on here yet either. Um, the the so the mail the and I used way back in the day when I had a Mac. So eight years ago, maybe seven years ago, um, I used the Mail client there too. It really hasn't changed that much, and it actually is very very similar to the to the Mail client that comes on Windows Ten. So if you have Windows Ten and you just yes. taken a standard Mail client, they're actually almost identical. (laughs) Like it literally pains in the same spot. The, the, you know, the viewing pane is in the same spot. It organizes email the same way you sign up for email the same way. 
they couldn't be, I mean, it's almost like someone copied the other and I'm not sure who I'm I think this male client's been around a little bit longer on the Mac side, but in, you know, I know for some people they, there's a, you know, it's kind of bare bones and they want more features, but I'll, I, I'll be honest. I kind of just want to check my email, respond to it or delete it. Like in, in this case, when I'm checking my own personal email work is completely different. I need a full out the client for yep. the way I manage Agreed. my email at work. That's my workflow. Hey, everybody's different. But the, for, for me, you know, so the average guy, so Jim at the average guy.tv, my Yahoo account, which I still have for, I, all, I sign up for all the offers with my Yahoo account. So it's kind of a massive spam account. Um, by the way, Verizon, do you know Verizon bought them? Did you know that Verizon bought Yahoo? I did not know that. Yeah. I, and, and they're, they're like, I'm having some trouble delivering, like they're getting, I think they've really cracked down on Yahoo email mm. because I'm having, we're having some trouble getting uh, some of my work email delivered to people with Yahoo accounts. So um, anyways, if you have Yahoo, you might want to check that. And then um, uh, my Gmail accounts. So I, I put all those in there. I loaded them up. One of the big differences between Mac and Windows for email is the Mac uh, email client is fast. Like it, I put Gmail in there and listen, I had like 900 Gmails, you know, or emails that I never responded to in Gmail. And there's thousands in there. Mm -hmm. And on the Windows side, it, it does some weird loading where it just takes a long time and then it doesn't even go back and get them all. And on the Mac, it was just like, poof, there they all are. I mean, literally, they just were there and ready to go, Mike. And I was like, wow. Do you even have to do with the new processor, like just being in faster machine, or do you think I, it's I don't. Mail client? So, so I don't know because I haven't had an older, I haven't had an older Mac. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know, but um, I wouldn't think. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just know it was a way better experience. I was That's like, great. oh, so. That, that was a big plus for me because now the other thing, and maybe this is the processor, it's just faster to go through email. Like I can, on the Windows side, and I don't have a slow box, but it would, it would you know, if I was going through and it was bringing, it was displaying each mail, I'd take a little bit of time to, you know, I couldn't just go delete, 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 delete. Yeah. On Windows, on Mac, man, if I better not hold that key down because it'll delete them all. <laughs> all 2,000 of them will be gone. I'm used to being able to hold it down for a few seconds between each one. I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, uh, so mail um, was a nice changeover. And I, I don't think I'm going to need to go outside for the way I do my own mail. I don't think I'm going to have to go outside and download an app or, you know, I, I think I could get Outlook for Mac if I wanted to. I, I could use my my office subscription to be able to get some of that. And I'm like, no, I think I'm just going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I'm the same as you. I, I mean, I need a, for work full outlook, right? I'm, I'm constantly utilizing all those features and calendar and zoom integrations and Salesforce integrations and logging those messages in Salesforce and things like that. So I need that. But for personal on the windows machine that I'm running on now, I use the built-in mail client, right? That's what I use. Cause yeah. it's easy. Just like you yeah. said, I like the stock. It's already there. It's easy. Um, Mac notifications. Let's talk about this because I have toast notifications coming up on windows all the time. One of the things that drives me nuts is it comes down on the, on your main PC. It comes down over the corner where the time, you know, over the top where the time right. is in the bottom right hand corner. And, um, sometimes if I'm away from my computer for a bit, it just, it, it like, it'll sense I'm back. And then it just starts hammering me on notifications. Just, yeah. just hammering me, you know? And then, um, sometimes I'm trying to get something out of the sys tray or I'm trying to see something. And of course, then it's popping up over the top of it. <laughs> I can't get to anything. And I'm like, ah, stay out of my way. Mac notifications, top right hand corner. Don't stay around as long. I'm never a little there. bit lower. So you can still yeah. see your time and menu. Yeah. It remind me of unraid notifications. Have you, when you get an, a notification in Unraid on the dashboard, it's over on the right hand side and it drops right, right drops down. Yep. Um, in different colors, the notifications are different colors. So if it's something you really need to pay attention, like if it did something on Unraid, this is on Unraid. If it's something good, it's green. <laughs> if it's something <laughs> that you need to kind of watch for, it's yellow. If it's something bad, it's red, which is super cool. I didn't notice that on the. I didn't notice that on the Mac. So I'm assuming that it's they're, they're not color coded, but maybe they are by application. That's a great question. No, I think they're, I think they're standard color. You know, to okay. be honest, I don't use many. I have 
been a, I didn't, by the way, I didn't set them up. They just yeah. started coming. I've been on a mission to turn off as many notifications as I can for like mm-hmm. everything on every device. I'm just really trying to get better at, you know, I don't need to see all this stuff, right? Yeah. I hate ESPN notifications on like the news. <laughs> I love it when I get the score alerts for my J's, but not yeah. when it's just yeah. news. Uh, but yeah, I, I, the notifications and Apple obviously have gone through a lot, right? Like everyone knows Apple is just, they, they can't get notifications, right? Especially on the iOS side. Now they've gotten better though. So I, I think, um, on the new version of Mac, they've gotten a lot better. Okay. I like how they, you know, you have the, you have the tray over there, um, with all the notifications and I like it. It works. And I think upper right, right. To be able to get to that. Um, and, and I do love, you know, if you go up to the clock upper right and you click on that, it drops down that notification plus exactly. like a dashboard. Yeah. So, and so you can cut that too. Yeah. With you want down there. And it looks just like my phone, which is super cool. Like now I'm like, oh, I recognize these. This is oh, cool. That would be cool if you could sync that across. Yeah. Like, hey, here's my what I use on iOS. Man, right. that would be nice. I wonder if that's coming. Right. Maybe maybe it already exists. I don't know. So not as the the notifications for me. I love notifications. I'm a little bit different than you. I like them. I, I rely on them. Okay. I like the notification. You just said you know Max had a lot of trouble with it. Well, maybe they got it right for me <laughs> this time. You're jumping in at a perfect time, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> First time ever. Yeah. First time ever. I got crypto right a couple of weeks ago, and now I got this right. You're on a roll. Just keep I, doing it, dude. I know. I need to bet on the lottery. Um. So, so that, that piece is working well. It does look like, huh, the windows, it did, it looks, when you click on the, when you click on the clock on the upper right windows, it's the bottom, right. Um, it's a very similar effect, right? So you have the, you have your notifications above they're stacked if you need them there. And then you can add some additional dashboard. I do like the ability to, to add some dashboard settings in there. So, excuse me. So that has been a really good, that part was a really good experience. The notifications got out of the way. They're there. I want them, but they got out of the way. Um, so that was good. Then it was time to set up remote access. So my remote desktops. And I have four, five, five probably PCs that I remote into from time to time. And um, there's a remote. Microsoft makes a remote uh, uh, access client, remote yeah. desktop client that's in the store. Listen, all Mac applications need to run through the store. All of a sudden, I realized how annoying it is. Like, with Windows, we just we've been installing things for so long. You just when you do something outside of the store, you just kind of I don't know, forgive it. But because it's a new experience on Mac, I'm like, crap! Why can't this be a store app? Like I just want it installed and there because yeah. in, in, installing can be kind of a jarring experience on a Mac. I think. Really? I think so. Yes. Okay, and I guess you know if you're coming if you're not new, used, I can always see how that yeah. can be. Coming but there's down. they have certain restrictions on what apps in the app store can do right. and what ones being downloaded outside can do. Right. So that's why like audio hijack could never be in the Apple store because it does things that Apple doesn't want yeah. them to do. As a kernel extension or something like that. Yeah, all, all yeah, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. So I, I definitely I'm not a big fan of installing things <laughs> at this point because I'm still like I get it done. You have to uninstall on a Mac. <laughs> How do you do it? You can't. <laughs> Yeah, I'll call you because yeah. like, you, you just, have to get an app to uninstall apps, like oh to fully to find to find all the files, delete it. Uh, yeah. You just you, you just try to get the trash, but to get rid of all the cruft, you have to have an app for that. You you did you just put the fear like you just put a lot of fear uh, in me. Um, Nathaniel in the chat room says uh, he says I don't agree with that. Package installers for Mac are pretty easy, or drag and drop applications folder. Um, yeah, Nathaniel. Y- y- yes, but again, I'm coming from I'm coming from a new environment, and I haven't done this in a while, and that's not intuitive. I think I installed one or two things. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get that, but you're like, that was weird. Like that really, you know, in, in Windows, it's a it's a really a single click from anywhere, and it's it starts installing right, and then you're done. And I that's not you know. No. So I think there's all those like next, accept this. Where do I want to install well, it? You get that in right. Mac too. Standard. You get that in Mac too. No, what yeah, I'm talking about you. is to start the installer, to just start it. I think. And see again, I've been doing Windows for a long time. Oh, right. and it pops up with like the 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 attached drive that you have to then. EJ. I mean, yeah, I could see it. Just, 
you, you download it and then you got it. Okay. Do, do I drag it into the applications folder this time? And then do I So, anyways, again, I'm not saying it's, it's hard for everybody. I'm just saying, I don't think the install experience is as clean as it could be or should I expected more yeah, to be honest. It is. That's yeah. what you want is an app store experience. Yeah. I expected more. So to do the remote desktop um, is, uh, was super easy out of the store. It installed, uh, and I was up and running, uh, and then, be, and then went in and it's, I think it's actually easier to set up remote desktop clients on Mac. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so much cleaner to like, you save all your different PCs that you have set up and I just think it's clean and easy to use. Well, it also saves your, um, your sign in information. So you like, I, Hey, I've got it. It's like, do you want to use a, a, a username and password? Yes. Do you want to use it from this one? Yes. Like it's a drop down selection and I'm sure there's a way to do that in windows. I don't think there is though. So, you know, again, it's, this is, this is super small. Like it's super minute of a difference here on, um, on the way it's done. But again, these are just my initial impressions. And so I kind of like, um, you know, it comes up when the remote desktop pops up, it's full screen and it's beautiful. Like you're like, it feels like it's native. Yes. Like you, it, it really does with windows, you know, you got that, you got the bar along the top and the resolutions are, you, I mean, you can move something like it just, I just never really, you know, it was yeah. just one of the, yeah. 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 It's just one of those things. So really like, really, really, really like that experience. The remote desktop has been good. I'm going to use it a ton. Um, when you bring it up, it's got pictures of the remote desktop clients in there. The last thing you left which is kind of cool. Uh, still kind of figuring out where I put what and I get all those things done. So that was done. And then a uh, bunch of, I got a bunch of help from Ed Sullivan. So Ed, thanks. He, I know he listens to every single <laughs> one of these, but big thanks to Ed who jumped on twice to help me kind of test, get this up and running. We did a bunch of audio tests. We did loopback so I can get, I had mentioned earlier, you know, I bought audio hijack and loopback to be able to play things out of the browser. But as he was walking me through those, um, boy, Loopback's got some powerful features that will allow me to take audio from really just about anywhere I want on the PC. So you can get as granular down as to just an application. Right. I'm going to take this application, send it through, and then Audio Hijack allows you to set up different filters or different um, gates, mm, different limiters, plugins, limiters, right? That's a whole new world for me. Like I've been a hardware guy, yeah. right? I've been, I bought mixers. Yeah. Right? It's essentially the go XLR app equivalent on the Mac side. It does all that kind of routing with software that you're trying to do um, with hardware. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel also says he likes the Mac remote desktop client better than, than windows too. I listen, I always I liked windows remote desktop. Like I, I uh, you know, I, I had an icon. I put all the icons in one spot on the desktop, click on it. Once you got it set up, click on it and you're in. But man, that was a, that was a huge surprise uh, to me. This how clean that was. So I'm struggling. Here's some areas I'm struggling. So those are, uh, in, uh, you know, those are the good things. There's been no showstoppers. I've never had a moment where I've been like, I made the wrong decision. <laughs> Take him up on that 30 day return policy. <laughs> Haven't had one of those yet. Like, oh no. Like it, it's always been, um, you know, there's some minor things as far as navigation. Let's just be honest. So I expect all the, na in Windows, you expect all the navigation to be in the app. That's not necessarily the case on Mac. So I'm, I, have a, I have an edge window open right now the close minimize and whatever options are there, but then the actual options are up in the top tool file bar. edit window <laughs> help all the, yes, that always stays up top. Yep, yeah. Right. And I and can't always way if you out of it. So yes, I can't always figure out why some are and one, why some aren't like who, what controls that? And wh when do I, if I have a window behind a window, which like, is it the one that's on the top that is up there? And what, like, I was really comfortable moving windows around and resizing them and snapping them in on, on windows. I, I have a little bit of work to do on Mac to figure out all the nuances. I'm sure it does some of that, 
but I still got to figure that out. My, what's the thing on the bottom? What do you guys call it in Mac? Yeah. The, the dock? Yeah. It's moved twice on me. <laughs> it was in front of me and then it was on the monitor on the right. And then it was back on the left and then it was back on the right. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if that's me or I'm doing something different. Can, can you move that doc? Is that and, a... and actually, so by default, so I can get more screen real estate. I have it not show up unless I put my cursor down there and then it pops up. Cause I don't yeah. like how it's always, you know, it's taken up a bunch yeah. of screen real estate. Yeah. Um, if you right click, the easiest place to do it is on the line that separates the right side from the left side. Okay. There's all sorts of, you know, minimizing position on mm. the screen, turn if magnification. I... So it kind of gets bigger as you drag your mouse across. Or kind of like I remember bigger. that from the old Mac. That's that functionality has been around a long time, right? I mean that the 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 toolbar down below or the dock has been around a long time, and I remember has, some yeah. of those things. Yep, correct. Yeah. Turn on hiding. So if I turn on hiding, that's when it goes away, and that's when I if I bring my mouse down, it pops up. Okay, I'll give that a try. The the great thing about this is you, you find all these little things, and you're like, oh, okay, we'll give that a shot. And I'll, I'll see what yes. that looks like. Yep. Um, I was kind of used to, uh, uh, you know, mouse without borders. And I download Synergy and I paid the 30 bucks. I think it's 30 bucks one time, which it's not terrible. Um, mouse without borders was free. And um, it is, it, that has been another one that has been difficult to get working across. Because so Synergy allow me to use my keyboard and mouse at plus, uh, copy, paste, that kind of functionality it, uh, across both Windows and, and the Mac. Right. Uh, it has, I can't, I, I've got some tweaking to do to figure out all the right. It's got some nuances in it that's just not, you would think like set it up, point it, put the IP address in and you're good. You know, that was kind of the mouse without borders. Synergy has not been that easy. So I've got a little work to do there. Interesting. My, yeah. See, it's weird. Some of these things that you're saying you've had issues with, I was like, I think for me, it was just like, boom, boom, done. Like it did work kind of the way. So there must be some little nuances there or things that have changed. Yeah. Are you using, are you trying to do on your work laptop or? Cause it seems no, to be working right no. now between your Windows machine and it, your Mac. I got one working. I have one, but the, the, the core I three box next to it, to the right, not working. Uh, and I got it set up it, 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 I said I had to do a reboot and I've got some plotting that's going on. So I don't want to reboot it just yet. So that could be the problem. Right? I didn't do a problem doing a reboot. And I said, no, <laughs> so the damn thing won't work. Could be my fault. I'm just saying, why. but it is, it's been harder. Like even when it did work right, there's a, this, it, it almost has like a windows feel to it. Cause there's like a system. You can either be as the system or as a user and then, okay. So what does that mean? And then, there's a automatic configuration in it, but when you click it, it does really nothing it, visibly. And so you're like, did that do anything? Like, you know, am I in, if I want to save this configuration and then on, um, on the Mac, it's actually every time I reboot, maybe you can help me troubleshoot this later. It re it like, it reinstalls every time it, it, it boot. Like I didn't, it asked me for the key. It, so this is where I'm frustrated on the install. Cause I don't know if I installed it correctly. So, I'll, at some point I'll spend some time with you and we yeah. can, we can look at it. Sure. Um, that's my frustration with install. It's like, not really sure it's installed correctly. So it, again, some of that's me, but I'm just saying first 24 hours, these are my first impressions. Um, getting that done. The, um, yeah. So windows sizing, kind of finding everything. I mean, still haven't set it up with my phone and my watch apparently. Cause now I didn't know you could just log in with the watch. Um, but 24 hours in, I like it. Like, I'm, now, I'm in. how snappy is it? Like, I, that's what I was really curious oh, about. Like, it feel, like, does it feel blazing fast? It's fast AF. I mean, yeah. it is, it, it is like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing dragging on this thing ever. You know, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Just click so. on it, opens, you're, you're going. I remember, you know, doing that the first time I upgraded this gaming PC. I was like, oh my gosh, stuff just yeah. like, yeah. Launches like I'm so I was so the same as you like working with old hardware right getting the most out of it. Brian in chat actually brings up my favorite. Brian, this is perfect. Best tip on the Mac thing I use all the time. Command space. I hit that more often than any other key combination. Brings up the search, the little search bar, mm -hmm. and apps. I launch apps that way. I don't click on any apps. I just that's how I start to type it. Boom, done. 
uh, math equations, you know, you can start, just start typing the equation in there and it'll give you the answer in that search box. Don't even need to hit enter. Um, that search is, they actually, the term Sherlock, you know, cause Apple, Apple has that term, they Sherlock something, which means they took a third party app that was great and they integrated it in. It started with Sherlock. That was a Sherlock app that had that same integration where you would hit a key combination. It would pop up with the search in the middle. Um, and they took that and integrated it right in. And it was, it was my favorite because it was something I loved the Sherlock app way back in the day. That's a great, that's a great tip. It does remind me uh, for the first couple hours, I was doing control C, control V or control V, control C. Yeah, the rest of your life, I still get, when I switch between the two, I'm starting to hit the wrong thing. Yeah. So I I'm having to physically think like, oh, we're how come that? Oh, that's right. Command. Yeah. Got to do command, command. I do have a, I've, I've been using Mac keyboards. Uh, well, I can't, I can't actually show it to you, but. I have been using Mac keyboards for years now. So I have the, I have the right keyboard for it right out of the chute, um, which I think will help uh, get that done. So a couple keyboard shortcuts. I'll learn some of those um, uh, this weekend. In fact, as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'll download it from. Uh, okay. I'm, this is, I'm kind of scared about this. So <laughs> I'm just going to admit it. I'm, I'm kind of scared. I have some anxiety. I got a download from StreamYard, the video file. And then put it into Audacity, which I've set up to strip out the audio. Mm -hmm. So that, at least that was my old workflow. I might do that differently as I learn the tools that are here. But I'm going to use Audacity because it's my core workflow. But then I got to put it into iMovie, right, to do yeah, to make the it. video. It's so easy. Okay, um, I it, it's my heart's beating a little bit because I'm like, am I going to be able to? Am I going to be able to do this? Oh, you, you'll um, love. It. If you have any okay. problems, you can, you can ping me because I it's iMovie is gonna be so simple. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I don't do a lot. Strip off the ends. I bring in a, I bring you know I say this is the average guy network, and you have found home gadget geeks. Then I put the I, I if you've ever watched the video, I put the title slide a title slide or a, a logo slide, and I play the music. Right. And then at the end, I put some music in another slide for for thirty seconds. So that's all I have to do. Make an MP4 out of it. Move it. You know, and then, oh, I'll have to figure out the new resolutions. Oh, no, no. No, I won't. Because no. I use Handbrake. Ooh, can I use Handbrake? Is Handbrake an option? Okay. But do I need to? Well, like, will iMovie kick it out in some new resolutions? Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, too, iMovie has export as audio. So you don't need to go strip the audio oh. out if you want to. You can just, in their same movie, you edit it once, and then you can export as the movie, and then export audio only, and you've got both. It's a whole I book Eve, that's iMovie. I'm opening okay. up iMovie now just to make sure I'm not whole leading you. New world, Michael Weaver. Weaver. I called you Weaver. Why did Weaver, I call Michael you Weaver? Weaver. Oh, that's a new that's one. Your, that's your like Jason Bourne name. Yeah. All right, Michael Weaver. <laughs> when you're out, when you're out murdering people. Um. Okay. Well, see, th this is what's causing me a little apprehension. Is that like I have done that process for you know ten years. I have dropped it into, you know, for me, dropped it into Audacity, stripped out the audio, exported it as an AIF mm -hmm. for full, and then put it in, <clears throat> um, put it in um, Alphonic. Uh, I use the web version of Alphonic, let it do its thing. And then dropped it into Windows Movie Maker, which I still have an executable for that you can't find it anymore, but I still have an executable for that thing. And that is drop dead simple. Like it's just put it in, slice it off. You get a little, you get a little wave file underneath it. I mean, they really did a nice job. That's one of the best pieces of software that they destroyed. Right. Uh, Cause it makes making movies super easy. Um, so learn an iMovie is uh, I'm a little apprehensive about it, but I'll, I think I will figure it out. You may get a few, watch your discord over the weekend, Mike. <laughs> okay. Watch your, watch your I discord will. over the weekend. And I am, uh, I'm looking. Yeah. So when you go to export, uh, again, this will, this will take you to, but like iMovie. So top right corner, there's a share feature. And if you click export file, like you're going to do a movie, there's under format video and audio, or do you want audio only? Okay. And then file format, you can do AAC, MP3, AIFF, or wave. So and is that MP3, um, Fraunhofer or lame? I'm sure it's Fraunhofer. Okay. You, you're looking at me like you've never heard those words. Fraunhofer. I, I, Heard those terms. Uh, the Fraunhofer codec is the one is the best of the two. Lame is the open source one, and it's not. Right. It's not great. It's, it's Apple's okay. 
it's high quality. It's right? got to be Fraunhofer. It's got to be. Imagine. Yeah, I would imagine it's probably. It's uh, but yeah, so, so then you so all you're gonna do download it from uh, Streamyard, pull it into iMovie first, and then and then do your editing, and then as soon as you click export, you've already you already know you've got yeah. your ends done, like you're set. Yeah. You don't need to trim twice. That'll be a save you time, right? Because don't oh, you totally have an audacity and no, no, you, I, no, no, to two, but I got to import it into audacity. It's already it's already cut when I bring it into audacity. So I do the movie maker first and get the, Oh, and then you bring that file into audacity. Correct. Got it. Yeah, use the, it has an FF encoder. One step. Yeah. Well, but okay. I do wait and I don't wait a long time, but I do wait a, a while to get those, all that processed. This is where the Mac will pay off. If it's really as fast as people say it is. Oh, it'll be fast. Yeah. yeah. So, this this weekend, this is where this is the you know be really be the first test of doing these processes of just how fast it can crank out an hour and twenty minutes of our you know of our blabbing on about things, and 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 I need to kick out a couple different formats. So this is what will save me today. I take the I I think I used an, an Android. Um, it's called Android Medium. So it's uh, it's pretty still a pretty big file. But I kick that out in its full form. So that's got audio, video. And then I use Handbrake to crunch that down to a video large and a video small that we move yeah. over to Mediafire, right? Well, I don't think I'll need... And, and then I have a version that goes to YouTube. I don't think... So for today, I got to fire up... Um, you know, I got to fire up a Handbrake. And then it's CPU only. Like none of these things use my GPU on, those, on, the, on the Windows side. So... I'm, I'm, what I'm hoping is I can go, you know, bam, export, bam, export, bam, export. And it, in a, once I get that in a kind of a workflow of exactly what I'm looking for, I kick the audio out first and get that over to audacity. Cause that, ta- or a, a, a phonic, cause that, that is slow. <laughs> that upload is slow. That processing is slow. Cause it's on their servers. And right. I guess someday I could buy the Auphonic for the Mac and, ha- and process it locally. And that, that may actually even speed that up, but the web version is pretty good. Then I got to create the version for YouTube, the video large and the video small. That's the savings in time that I'm hoping we can just kind of bam, bam, bam. And do you utilize the cues in Handbrake? Yes, yes. You just cue, 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 and then hit start, and that way you don't have to come in between each one. Right? And I, they're all presets, so it's yep. just literally pull it in. Cue, and, cue, yeah, name start. the file, save to queue. Name the file, save to queue. Hit start. But as soon as I hit start, the CPU goes to 100. Like. You know, it's a hand, handbrake. It just goes yeah. to 100. And I've tried several times to get handbrake to use the video cards, but um, it for whatever reason it just doesn't. I mean, it kind of does, but it doesn't. Right. So I'm kind of I'm I'm looking forward. Again, I, it's not like time is money in this case, because um, I'm just waiting, doing other things, <laughs> writing show notes, those kinds of things. But this is where this is where if it's as fast as they say it is, this is where it should pay off. So we'll see. With fear and intrepidation, Mike, I'm going into, I'm going into. I am. Listen, I am worried. I just it's new, and I've ten years of doing this the same way for ten years. Right. Here's the good news. Is I is I'm hoping I can use this as an opportunity to change things up. Because there's things in Movie Maker you just can't do, right? And I, I imagine in iMovie, there's some. It's going to give me some additional ability. I won't do it right away, but I may get to add some things. You know, some better graphics, some of those kinds of things to it. Better transitions, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. I'm just, I'm just no premiere, show. right? I, like next week when we get on the show, it's either going to be Mike, I'm selling this thing, or Hey, that was actually really fast. So I'm excited to hear how it yeah. all goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so one unrelated story. So I went to pick up Sammy today. She's home for the weekend. My, my number two son turns 30 this weekend. And so we're having a, a party for him. It's hard to believe. How old are you? Turning 30 <laughs> next month. It's my number two. Okay. So anyways, um, so I'm bringing Sammy home and we're talking. I said, Oh, you're going to have to turn your, uh, your computer in. Cause she, the school, she's at Northwest Missouri state and they issue you as part of tuition. They issue you a laptop. It. It's kind of great because they do, they take care of everything. They take care of the image. They take care of the antivirus. They take care of the, 
all that stuff. If it breaks, she just takes it in. They give her another one. Like it's a great program. I would, I would not do it any differently, but just turn it in when she leaves and you can't buy it. And I wouldn't want to just to be honest. So the question I asked, I said, Hey, the Mac came in. And so we started talking about that. I said, you're going to need a new computer windows or Mac. Like I listen, what was your uh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I never, it would have been Windows all the way, right? I, right. Uh, you know, right. But now that we've been talking about it, the price points on these things, you know, as we think about like what you can do with them, you know, we priced out that, I mean, what it was 1400 bucks, I think is what right. we priced out, right? The, 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 which, that? MacBook Air? Uh, the Air. Yeah, it was MacBook Air. And that were, that were great for. She said, I don't know. She said, I've worked Ooh, on both. Cool. What was the school? laptop that there was issue it's a H, hp hp okay. windows yeah hp and windows 10 so she's like she's gonna be a journalist she's gonna do podcasting she actually has her podcast figured out we're gonna have her on as we get into the spring we're gonna have her on cool. to talk about that yeah i'm actually i'm super like i'm super excited about that part like i i she's and it's nothing like i thought it was gonna be like i didn't i had no idea what she's going to do is not what i thought what when we talked you know back at, at thanksgiving totally different. So it's cool. That'll be coming up more on that as we, as we progress. I won't jinx it just yet. Um, she said I could do either. And I thought I'm buying you a Mac. <laughs> like that was now okay. as in 24 hours and you're already, you're uh, right I know, in. no, I know. I was just like, like, it's just a, I don't know. Well now, okay. That's, I've got one day. I'm super excited about this thing. It's worked out really well, but, but, yeah, it's just like how far have we come? <laughs> now, I, now I have to buy myself a Windows machine, so now I'm locked in, right? Because if you if you are going Mac, then now I have to be the Windows guy. Yeah, well, okay. Um, for everybody listening, I still have plenty of Windows machines. Like, let's remember most of my infrastructure okay. down here. Right. I'm just getting hit right now. Like, oh, well, there oh, I go. They're out, they're out. Most oh. of my infrastructure down here is Windows. What what I really want to be is agnostic. Like I don't yeah. really want to care. I, I want to use what's best for what I'm trying to get done. And I try to in in you know, so this goes back to the conversation that we had in the very beginning about using bookmarks. I I don't want to be beholden. Is that the right word? I don't want to be beholden to a browser. I don't want to be beholden to an OS. If, if there's anything, I want to be beholden to the best process. Like what, what is the absolute best process for this thing? How do I make it work? And so this journey of, of having the Mac now and then jamming it into the current workflow, that is the command center down here, of how do I make this fit in to my environment and make it look not like a Mac and not like Windows, but like productivity. Right. You know? I like that. It's yeah. good to think about it. Because yeah. I'm the same way, right? I mean, I, I run Unraid, Windows, Linux on a Raspberry Pi, Mac. Just like whatever works best for the process. So best process. And I think what you said is perfect. Don't be beholden to any sort of one ecosystem. Yeah, to make all this, you know, Windows here over to the left, Mac in the center. You can't see it. You can't see it now. My power button actually went out. I think it, it broke on my on my Surface Pro, but there's a touch screen you can't see because it's off. Touch screen Surface Pro right down here. This is what I put a dashboard on. And then, you know, again, we talk off to the right. I've got another window stack and I might work stack. Now, some of that will go back. You know, some of that will go back in with me when I go back into the office and, and that will change. But that's kind of the idea. And then, you know, I'll have an unraid infrastructure of some kind that'll be running some Windows stuff. Mm -hmm. got a, I've got a Drobo in here. I've got that Moro data box that is really doing what it's designed to do. I am excited. I'm staring right now at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 hard drives. They're going to find, they're going to find their way into it to a new home, to a new you're consolidated home projects for like the next few weeks. I think, I think you're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Report back on every week. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. So again, Joe, thanks for, for sending that on. If you, um, uh, I would love, we'd love to talk to you about some of this stuff. And if you want to join us in the discord group, just head out to the average guy.tv slash discord, jump in there. There's all kinds of great, um, 
you know, all kinds of great channels. Is that the right, am I yeah. using the right terminology? Good, I don't know, good conversations over there too. I'm actually behind. I, uh, I haven't had time to look at discord in a while and you guys are having some great conversations amongst yourselves. Well, and there's some like the, the deals, you know, Kevin Schoonover jumps in on the deals, uh, section all the time and, and posts those. If you got a deal, smart home, hardware, unraid. So, um, yeah, join us, join us there. Mike, anything you want to update us on before we wrap it? No, I, I'm, I, again, I'm just loving this journey you're on, uh, with the Mac and it's, it's, it, it warms my heart. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty great. It's good to have a Mac back in the house, just to be honest. Uh, you know, I had a Mac laptop for a lot of years and it was an older one and I never really got it where I wanted it just cause I was limited on the software. This, I feel like I've got a real shot at, um, kind of making it a hub of productivity down here and, and pretty excited. And then again, figuring out how not to be, not to worry about, you know, the OS, uh, or, or even the browser or even the app, like what's the, what's the best thing? What's the, what the, the best environment to set this up? How do I get it done for max productivity? I know for me, I am more productive when I just have windows up, like, if something's put away, this is the way it is in my life, not just with digital stuff. But when I put things away, I might as well have thrown them away. <laughs> uh, I kind of need them out front. My life is a cluttered, as you can see here, is a cluttered mess. But I need I need to physically see things. And so it's great, you know, for me, this has been, it, the more monitors I put up, the actually more productive I, I become, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, the only, actually, there was one thing I was going to say is, I don't know if any of you guys are, you know, Obviously, working from home, keyboards also became really important mm -hmm. to me. I have bought and returned about five to ten different keyboards in the last year because I was trying to find some that I really liked. Um, I really like. I, I ended up on the the Razer Sonosa, I think is what's called V2. Um, it's about sixty dollars. Uh, I I love it. I I did not want. I had like an old gaming la keyboard that was mechanical, very clicky. Uh, not great for Zoom calls, not great for podcasting, right? It's it's satisfying in some regards, but that got old after a while. This has a very nice feel to the keys. Um, not squishy, but yet soft. It's a weird way to describe it. Like it's not loud and it's kind of a nice soft, but still very, I know I hit the key. Individually backlit if, if you're into that. So you can do all sorts of designs with the with the backlit LEDs behind it. Uh, I, I've, I really like it. So yeah, if you guys are looking for a good keyboard, I got the V2 of it because it has the volume media controls in the top right, which I actually use. I use media controls all the time, especially when I'm playing games. Um, it's a quick way I can turn volume up and down on certain things without having to hop out of the full screen game. So just a, a good keyboard I found. It's it's hard to find good keyboards. And I, I tried a bunch of cheap ones on Amazon and I returned them all. And this one was finally, okay, it, it, it was worth it. Not super high end, but also not super low end. What was the retail on that? 60 bucks i believe 69 bucks maybe oh, that's not terrible 59.99 right now not terrible no oh. that's not terrible i think i'm gonna have to replace my mac keyboard i'll go wired again because i just don't i don't that's like what this is. i'm the same way i'm wired everything i have a i love this logitech i have a g502 se it's one of their hero series mice love it um i actually took out all the weights so on this mouse it's kind of cool i wonder if i can show you guys you can add weights to the bottom and i had had them all in there because i kind of like a heavier mouse so they come with these little weights that you just kind of oh, snap nice. in there. So you can mm. make it as heavy, and it comes with a bunch of them. So you can put them in there. Uh, so I had it really heavy because I thought that's what I wanted. And who was it? Someone? It, it was someone here. Um, it was Kirshner, right? Who was talking? He was, thought I was crazy. He's like, "Why would you want a heavy mouse when you game with it? Because your poor wrist is like yanking that stuff around." And uh, he was right. I took all the weights out and I love having a lighter mouse now, but just the customizability, you could add in a little bit more weight if you're not. And that was a relatively cheap mouse too. So I think I found finally my perfect, uh, the Logitech mice and the Razer Sonosa. It's a weird name. Sonosa V2. Yeah, I think that's a good recommendation for sure. Let me get you back. Let's get, there we go. There we go. Yeah, no, I think that's a good, I think that's a good call. I, uh, I've gone pretty standard with a Logitech you know, this is a $45 mouse. Yeah. So. I think we have the same one. This is the one I use for work. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. No, pretty great. And, and, uh, work great. I've got the receiver on the end of the Mac keyboard and just, just 
seems to work. So yeah, because Warp would not let me install Mouse Without Borders. I haven't put in an IT mm-hmm. request. Like, yeah, no, nah, we're not letting you install that. So <laughs> when I work from home and I have that laptop here, I actually just have, I have to move the USB for the keyboard and I have two mice on the desk. Uh, we have Aaron Lawrence next week. And so if you're the, 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 the run on uh, Jim and Mike solo <laughs> is over at least for the next four weeks, which is probably pretty good. I've got a bunch of work to do. I, I've got a bunch of work to do. Uh, we'll see again. We'll see if we can get Joe from the ultimate dashboard back at some point, but Aaron's here next week. Well, I'm sure we'll talk a little Mac. Um, uh, by the way, if you want to leave me your favorite Mac tip, love to hear that. We'll play him on the show as well. Go over to homegadgetgeeks.com and click on the microphone button, bottom right-hand corner. In 30 seconds, just give me your best Mac tip or your funniest Mac tip. Or if you want to just rail on me for talking about Mac on the show, love to hear those messages as well. All available. Homegadgetgeeks.com. We'll play those next week when Aaron is on. I have some discussions around that. John Maddox is coming from Channels. Uh, I think they just did an announcement or are going to do an announcement about uh, some integration with play on. We will talk about that in two weeks when they're here. Um, so that's pretty cool. Jay Madison is on the week after that. And then Dwayne Johnson joins us and I'll line up a few more in there. By that time, we'll have some things to come back and update you on uh, new unraid servers and a couple more weeks with the Mac and some uh, opportunities. Who knows? Maybe it's four weeks later and you're listening to the audio. Cause that's how long it took me <laughs> to, figure, to figure. I'll be honest. I just go back to the PC. If I couldn't figure it out this week, I just go back to PC and do it uh, and do it there and get it done. Um, I'm going to leave the studio box for a couple months. Probably we'll stay the studio box for a while, even though I've got all this stuff to set up. I kind of want to make sure all that stuff is kind of taken care of before, right. I, before I get that done. Uh, a couple of reminders uh, before we go, like I mentioned, if you want to join us in the discord group and a lot of great conversation, but not too much conversation. That's the beauty of discord right now, at least our group. You can skip it for a couple days to a couple weeks and not feel like you missed the whole world right. on that. So the average guy.tv slash discord, if you want to jump in and get that done, if you got an email, send it to me, Jim at the average guy.tv. I'm at Jay Collison on Twitter. Uh, Mike is at Uyghur tech. Of course, the average guy.tv platform, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove partners get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know, and you trust. And that's Christian. We just tested the backup to his, uh, or I did, for the average guy.tv this this week, he is fully redundant now. Uh, there are Maple Grove partners, so I'm mine working too. Yeah. It did take I had to email me like, How do I do that? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and he's like, No problem, here's how you do it. And I switched it over, and it's all working. It was great. And so now, if there's a failure in one, the other one's ready to go. Um, uh, he's got plans for as little as ten dollars a month if you want to jump in there. Before you do that, um, uh, head out to maplegrovepartners.com. And um, uh, let them know that you heard it here on Home Gadget Geeks. We always appreciate that. Jim uh, wants a prediction real quick. Chiefs oh, yeah. or Bucks for this week's Super Bowl? I'm going to say Chiefs by 14. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to okay. run away with it. They're just too hot right now. Yeah. Bill, I think, think? Uh, Chiefs by four. Okay. All right. I think it's going to be close. What's I think the, Tom Brady is just – it. I, yeah. I, that's the question. I do not know what the spread is at right now. Let me check. Brady goes out in the third quarter with an injury. That's my, that's, that's my, okay. That's my prediction. So, uh, no, I don't know. I just, I'm just kind of joking around. I don't know. I don't, I don't wish ill on anyone for that, but I think Vegas has it at three chiefs by three. Yep. You're right. Yeah. I, I don't think, um, I don't think the bucks defense is going to be able to keep up. The Kansas City's just too fast. They are just, this isn't uh, uh, just, it's crazy how, it's just crazy. Or the Bucks will go up by, you know, 35 in the first quarter, and then the Chiefs will come back and win it by 20. <laughs> it's just our style. What do we do? I am never worried. We could be down 21 in the fourth, 28 in the fourth. I'm like, there's still a shot. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, so, Mahomes, he just takes care of all of us. He you know? just, oh, my gosh. He's just such a good kid, too. Like, yeah. you, you can't know, not. Like, no, no, you can't. There's just. There's not a lot of things to not like with that right. guy. And so, I mean, it's not like he's deflating footballs or, uh, you know, those, <laughs> the, the, you know, just right. cheating kind of things. Yeah. So I'm not saying he's a cheater, but, you know, maybe, 
And so we are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Ed's probably never going to talk to me again after comments like that. He's a big, he's a big um, Tom Brady fan, New, New England fan. I don't know if he's a, much of a Brady fan as he is a New England fan, but we are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Thanks for coming out. Got a couple, we got a busy four weeks ahead. Love to have you leave those voicemails at uh, homegadgetgeeks.com. If you're listening live, stay around for some post show. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody. Nathaniel, I have one of those too. I love it. I, I have the Steel Series extra. I have the biggest one they offer, I think, or maybe one of the biggest mouse pads. And it literally is, I can't even, it's that big. I just picked my hands up off the desk. I love it. Deep, my entire, my mixer, my keyboards, my controllers, everything sits on it. And I love it. They also make really good, um, that's a great gun cleaning mat. I've learned. I took my other one that was not as big and I have it over on my workbench and that's what I clean all my guns on. Uh, great. It absorbs all the oils and stuff. And I, I really like using that. I've got a large uh, ultra pro that sits here. Um, I, I think we talked about that in the show when we did his desk, kind of his desk layout show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I picked one up or maybe I had it there, but yeah, I like it. I, it gets dirty. I just throw it in the wash. You know, oh, I about that. Bring I it, yeah, bring it out. I've got a little rack that we just dry it on, and then it comes back. Um, last Saturday, I spilled coffee all over it, um, and it just literally just sheds. Like it was during Ask the Podcast Coach, and I tipped coffee went everywhere, and um, I just kind of dabbed it and dried it off, and it was fine. So it's just kind of nice to have. See, mine is like the most absorbent. I'm, I almost spill some. I'm like, where did it go? And then it just smells. <laughs> Like this thing, if I spilled a whole Yeti of water, it like there would be no water anywhere because it just absorbs everything. Yeah, same yeah. here. We, yes, Brian, we we would like to get revenge for your Packers as well. So we'll be. I I actually think I'll be listening to the Super Bowl via radio. So Sammy needs to go back to school. The best time to really get her back is that five o'clock slot. So I think we'll leave here at three or three thirty, and then um, uh, so I'll probably listen to the first half. Uh, in the car. I'll mess with you. I'm a lot less stressed when I'm listening to it on the radio driving than when I'm watching it, watching on TV. Yeah. I'm going to be racing back from Minnesota uh, to watch it here. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow morning, bright and early for, from Minnesota. And then I come back Sunday, I went up to see my sister. Then I'm going to come back down here for it. Yeah. So you're going to, will you be back in time? No. Oh you're yeah. Gonna, you're, yeah okay. I'm not leaving bright and early tomorrow and then coming back Sunday morning as well. So it's only a five and a half hour drive from here to okay. where she's at. It's not yeah, bad. It goes, it goes pretty fast. I got a I new think. book. I'm all set. Um, this is real quick. This is the loop back. Uh, Ed had me buy today, this loop back audio, which allows you to kind of create then basically virtual it's, you know, virtual cables. I think oh. there's actually a program in windows called virtual cable that you can use very, very, very similar. Um, but in this case, you know, I have the Mo2 that I'm talking into now, and you can see that you can see the monitor going kind of across, and it's going out to the channel output that's on the right. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the Edge browser down here that I have currently turned off. What I, what I like about this is I can I can really identify, and I think you can do this in in virtual cable as well. But um, I can identify just the application to play. So with the mixer, with the audio mixer, I kind of had full mix of PC or no mix at all. Like it was on or it was off. I didn't have a way when I was doing it on a hardware mixer, I didn't have a way of really isolating that. And when I first, um, I need to, you can see I, I'm in trial mode here. I need to put my key in. But um, when Ed first showed this to me, I was like, oh, gosh, this looks complicated. Not, not as complicated as it looks. And it, it, you can make it complicated. But then, uh, Mike, I can just turn that on. And now Edge is on. And if I played... So if I go, let's go find, um, let me go find really quick the pod page. Do I have those up? So let's go to the pod page. Grab tiles. Have you seen Loopback before, Mike? I have. Because uh, I really, like I said, I want to get into this a lot. And actually, so it looks like you're playing, because like, when I start talking both left and right channels, actually, my only comment to you was, I'm wondering if your microphone, if you need to set it up as mono, because if you notice when you're talking, only left channel is activated. Oh. And when I'm talking, I were both activated. So you might have a, a weird recording this week, just because it might be, well, I guess you're coming from StreamYard, which I think is only mono. It is. I don't think they're stereo, so I think that might yeah. save you, but... If you're ever recording locally, just keep in mind that you have 
your microphone there is set up to only come in the left channel and everyone else is coming in both if it's coming from different. So you would only be heard on the left side, which might sound weird. Yeah, I have to check it on yeah. there. I'm pretty sure I mixed that all together just as one mono. Uh, Nathaniel says that he did mention Lubac when we were thinking about getting a Mac and if it would work. So Nathaniel, thanks for doing that. Um, yeah, I noticed I was only coming in on the left side. And then when you say something, say something for me. Check one, two, check one, two. So yeah, you're actually... Um, it's, it's putting out in stereo. Whereas that microphone, whatever the input is, is only mono. Which if you mix down to mono anyway, it doesn't oh. matter. Yeah, but they could hear you the whole time. So that would have been funny if they... I was thinking for a second, oh crap, did you go to the recording? But yeah, because you were going through StreamYard. We're going through Not, StreamYard. That's yeah. what I mean. So if you were recording this locally, right. or actually even more importantly, if you were sending this out to... Um, what's uh, no, um, what's the audio only thing? I don't know if you still oh, do it. Spreaker, Spreaker. So Spreaker might have an issue because if you're using this to send a Spreaker, it might only be left for you. I'm coming in both, oh. so it's that. So I would listen back to that and hear how that sounds. Let's see, hold Put on, it and listen. Let me see. So I can see the monitor. So one, two. No, it's in stereo. There, you can see left and right. Uh -huh. It splits it up. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's the nature of. The way it's set up, I think even though I'm sending a mono signal, it's taking both stereo channels, if that makes sense. It's not left only. It's mono down both sides. Got it. Okay. I think. I think. Yeah. I think. But you should be able to hear. Now, let me play this. You should be able to hear Kyle from two weeks ago. Did nope. you hear that? No. So what did I do wrong? You couldn't hear that. You couldn't hear that. I couldn't. Could did, uh, did audience? Can you guys hear? If you're listening, can you guys hear this? They would hear what I hear. I had that working earlier. So oh then, no no no! I know why. I know why. Hold on. I have to. I, outs, I outsmarted myself. So I have to go into the audio settings in, in Streamyard in and, Streamyard and choose the mic because I did that on purpose so that I wouldn't get any system sounds. Right. So now it's set to the loopback to this piece of software. And now you should be able to hear it. Thought about buying them for my teachers. Probably won't work out because we're all windows and everything. But um, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to throw out there. I think. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm doing a bunch of this at work. I've been trying to get folks to do it here, you know, but um, I'm getting ready to do a bunch of it at work. And so I need to make sure that works, that piece works. But I got to remind myself to go into StreamYard each time and make sure that the um, setting is set to loop back and not, you know, and not, um, by the way, go back to the app real quick. I'm curious if you draw, can you draw a line? So like, see how your mic is only mono left. Yeah. Can you do two lines from the top one to the top one to the bottom? See how like from your M2 box. Yeah. See, and then you could delete the bottom line that's going from the one that's not even showing anything. And, uh, I don't know how you delete the one that's already there. The line that's coming out of that. Yeah, this this one that's going straight across. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. On the bottom. You can't see the you can't see the the mouse. Yeah, I can't see the cursor. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what I just uh, I'm clicking, it's not doing anything. I'd have to figure that out. Yeah, but that solves your issue right there. Because see how now, whenever you talk, both left and right channel on one, the right. Two, going yep. Oh. Okay. Look at that. Nice. Because that might also help volume too. Because if you know, it, even if you're going out to mono, if it's trying to pull and there's only half of the volume because you're only coming into mono, I don't know if that's really how it's going to work. Yeah. But uh, it's good now. Now you're good. Now we both are having the same left and right. So yeah, you won't you definitely have to listen to. But why would it be left? What do I have? Oh, hmm. your microphone's mono. Unless what 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 are you connecting that mixer in with? USB. USB. It's probably only a mono channel, which is weird. Most mixers are stereo with USB, but yeah, maybe there's a setting in there that I just have to mess with, you know, to get that to get that again. Just, just got this up and running. Just yeah. got it. Just got it moving, and and um, lots to learn, lots to test, lots to get kind of figured out. I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited. I need to, you know, I got kind of stagnant on my both video and audio stuff. Of like, yeah, it worked. It's good enough, but I think it's time to step it up and pick it up a little bit, you know? So did some, did some video edit work at work, which 
they haven't allowed me to do up until this point in time. We have video editors that do that work, but they're so overwhelmed. And so they were, um, so I showed those to the team and they were like, you did this. <laughs> I was like, yeah. They're like, why aren't you doing more of this? <laughs> you know, this is pretty good stuff. And it was like super simple, just, you know, transitions, just making sure you get the transitions right and lined up and the audio set, you know, make sure the cadence between the transitions, like transitions are hard for most yeah. people. Right. And I was able to get it where it would fade almost perfectly their head. So their head was always in the right spot. And so it was, it would fade. It would, it would just fade really smooth to the next person. And then you got to get that audio timing, right? So that it, 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 there's just the right amount of time. Natural. That takes, of, that takes a lot of time and effort to go, to go through and get that yeah. right. Yeah. And the better edits you do before you bring those in, the easier that is. So that's the key. Like you got to edit really, really those individual files. You got to edit really, really well. So anyway, some good opportunities for me um, to do some more of this. And now that I've got this, I'm hoping to, pick it up and then who knows maybe adobe premiere is uh is next on this uh, <laughs> just go with the window or the mac versions premiere uh, or not premiere now i'm totally blanking on all the the uh, pro mac right, apps right right i guess that would be the next step that why can't i think of the name of this um well, well, let's wrap it but uh, i will tell you since we're in post show um so sammy has been watching um uh, knit like like crafters on Twitch. Okay. Mm. I didn't see this coming. So there's like a whole bunch of folks that are out there doing knitting and crocheting and some of those kinds of things, crafts, and they're streaming it on Twitch. And so it's a cool and, idea. Actually, it's a good way to do it. They're getting like hundreds and thousands of people to watch these things, right? So she's of course she's big. She's big into crafts, and so. Um, she contacted one of them and said, Hey, would you be open for an interview? And they're like, yeah, I'd do that. And so what she's going to do, she's not going to stream. She's going to do what I do. And she's going to have these craft people on and just kind of interview about their, their tell us your story and what you're doing and give us some tips and some of those. Kind cool of idea. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. She's pretty pumped. So we're trying to come up with a, kind of a name will will for those of you and the reason i bring it up now because anybody who's listening at this point is super engaged so we're gonna um i'll bring her on she's out of school probably may time frame i think middle of may so probably first of june we'll bring her on to kind of cross do a little cross promotion and maybe not for you who's listening but maybe you've got family members or some of those kinds of things so we're gonna ask I'm going to try and get our network to get out beyond itself to kind of help promote her to get her kind of started in that. And it's just, it's for her, it's just a starting project. It's not, it's not going to make a living off it. It's not going to be her job. So it'll be a fun project. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I think it will be. She, she comes home in May. She's got to take one more class at Northwest and then she'll graduate in this at the end of the summer and, and kind of be done. It's hard to believe it's been four years already, but. It's been four years already. Wow. So yeah, she's pretty pumped about it. It was fun to talk. We talked about that on the way home and I was, she was like, yeah, dad, you, cause I told her, you know, uh, you know, this could be a possibility. And so she tested the waters a little bit and she was like, yeah, this could, this could kind of work. So it's fun. It's good idea. I think so. I think so. Shouldn't no name yet. No, uh, nothing. We haven't figured that part out, but she's really good at it. She's good at interviewing. And so I give her a good chance to do that. Right. So, guys, if you're listening live, thanks for coming out tonight and, uh, and hopefully, Watch and see when the file comes out. I may actually give it a run, um, Mike, tonight to see what, to see if I can just figure this out. Have fun. May the force be with me. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, if you're listening live, thanks for coming out. We will see you guys uh, next.